Hi, this is Vaughan at uh, Westcote Bell Pottery in, uh, in Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, I'm going to do a video today on casseroles. Um, I've done it before, but it'll be a little twist because I've got two cameras set up. Uh, I'm actually going to pack, trying to build up inventory to build and pack a gas kiln firing. So I'm just showing you these because I've done an assortment of shapes, sizes. Um, so when you're planning your studio day, um, it's good to know um, when you can fire your kiln, if you can fill it, and what you need to fill it. So I have all of these pieces made at the moment. Um, plates, large bowls, um, chip and dips. Um, so I've got plenty of big pieces, but I'm still going to do five more big pieces because I have a 24 cubic foot kiln out there. So, um, so basically I need to fill it. Uh, so I'll probably have to do a few more small pieces after today maybe throw those either late today uh, or tomorrow morning. But I'm, you know, trying to, you know, assess my inventory, um, you know, so that uh, I can get that kiln packed efficiently. So there's no tiny spaces, you know, left with, you know, where there could be something. Um, but uh, here you go. That's my uh, little intro. Okay, let's get... Let's do this. All right, this is uh, the casserole, baking dish, bean pot. Um, I always clean my bats like this so that I don't do it at the sink, and then I don't block all this clay up in my sink pipes. So, there we go. So I am using six and a half, seven pounds of clay. Hang it in the center. You set off Helping hand, by rounding it a bit. All right, so then I'm gonna force it down a bit more, just to kind of make sure we're adhered to the wheel. And then I'm gonna cone it, just so that I can make sure we don't have any lumps of clay or air bubbles that I can feel in there. Sorry about the bat banging. Depends on my old wheel here. This is a Brent wheel. It's probably 40, well, 35 years old. <laughs> anyway, when did I buy this? In the late 80s, I think. So we're forcing it down from coning so that it basically gains a little bit more workability, making sure there's no air bubbles that I can feel or lumps of clay. It doesn't put me off with that, the knocking. I know a lot of people get put off completely with that. But, um, and the, the back probably is a little warped, I suppose. Anyway, now push down. My elbow is locked into the wall here so that I can actually not be forced to give way a little bit with my left hand. I've talked about that before. It's just an added support that you can rest on besides the splash pan itself. I'm only leaving about a centimeter of clay at the bottom. And I'm working across the bottom a couple of times to compress the clay there. Watches all that flat middle fingers. Does help. And then basically wet the rim so it dribbles down outside and inside and then do a quick pull with your knuckle on the outside to kind of push the wall up but you have to do quick because it drags the, the water off the pot so quickly but it will just cone it a little bit and narrow it with that weight of your knuckle then the same dribble water all the way down and you can use a sponge in your hand if you want to at this point and press just the other side of the sponge so you can dribble a little bit of water on as you're doing the pull here. See that little knocking thing? It doesn't, it will put a lot of people off. So if you have bats that do that, you have to decide whether to throw them out or keep them, I guess. Hello, can I help you? Uh, it's across the street, the other building. 
yeah. or some customers okay. by the sound of it. Now the same again, I'm going to do another pull. And the sponge is just pushing a little bit of water on the piece ahead so that I've always got it wet. And don't go too thin when you're doing a baking dish. And I don't want to open it up too much at the top either. And I'm leaving a really thick piece of clay at the top so I can get the shelf plus the wall that holds the lid in. Drill again. This time I'm going to use the metal rib to push again. A nice strong form of a curve so it doesn't hang out too much. I don't need to add more water at this point, I need to get it off. We've got a piece that's fairly decent. The wall is very even. So I'm dragging the water off by pressing against the edge of the metal rib. And here, I'm going to try and throw a little bit more height. Leaving that thickness because I want to be able to get the, basically a, a shelf and a wall out of that lump of clay there. Take a look at your form. You can basically open up a little bit higher now because you've just got some extra height. So I'm changing the curve a little bit. Drawing with a camera video is like having a mirror there. You can see what you're doing. There you go. So the last bit I have to do is the little lip. So I'm going to wet the top and wet underneath. Pull up that wall, that's where I'm going to get my thing, and I'm hoping I've got my size right. Put the needle just to score and start opening it up a touch. That doesn't drag on the pot at all. And then this little wooden rib here, I dribble water in before I push it down. So you've got a nice bit of lubrication there, and then you kind of pull it over, and it actually flattens that little, I'm trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we have a shelf. It's quite a deep shelf. I could probably cut that down in trimming to make it a bit more of a bigger opening even. Pulling across to open up the wall a little bit. Now I'm going to get the water out because we don't want it to soften down anymore. So I'm going to try to start at the top and pull the little sponge lightly against the inside all the way to the bottom. To dribble out all that water. It's a good handful of water there. So I compress the base at the beginning. I'm just drying the wall out now. It's nice and even. Get the water off here too. Everything that's there is, whoops, there goes my sponge for a ride. And then we have to see how close we were to what I was aiming for. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Nope, no, it's too small. 
and I can make the lid to fit that, but I was trying to get them all the same size. But let's see if I can just open that up a touch. Perfect. It's nice if all the lids that I'm going to throw today are all the same size, so that I won't have to keep track of them in the damn cupboard. And then I'm just going to define the edge of that a little bit more. lost a piece of clay but I'll just gain it back again. There's that little bit there. And this, I'm just going to try and flatten it just a touch more. That shelf is a little wide. I think I might trim a bit off when I'm, when I'm trimming. I don't need a big shelf like that. Let's see if I can compress to it. This is my Freddy tool. Thank you, Freddy. This, this is a groggy clay, a little bit of groggy clay, so I'm just going to round off the rim a little bit there. A leather would work, but basically that tool does the job. Make sure there's no water dribbling down because some clays, if you get a little extra water just in the dribble, they're going down, they'll split right at that point because they absorb that moisture. That is one heck of a bean pot. Okay, I hope you've got eight people coming to dinner. All right, so we know it's the right size. We just measured it. Perfect. Just going to take that off. Another bat. The lid is the easy bit. Okay, nice and moist. One and a half pounds for the lid. have to breathe on it to center it when it's only this small. It only took 45, 7, whatever years to get to this point. It's just repetition. And I think I'd rather be doing this than going fishing. <laughs> A lot of people, it's the bumper sticker that says I'd rather be fishing. I love doing this. I have a lot of people recently wanting to do classes, but I just can't with COVID. So, um, but um, but there is a going to be a lot of people getting into clay. I think in the next five years. And now I want a nice dome, not a flat lid on this. So there you go. I'm going to measure it now. I think I'm a bit small. That's the opening, so this is the, the little, I'm not sure what they call these calipers. Oh, look at this. I'm perfect, straight off. And that was, I was thinking that was small, so I probably would have made that too big. But anyway, I've got a nice thick piece of clay there for the edge of the lid, and that's good because it won't chip easily. I'm gonna double check this just to make sure. That was the inside the thing. Yeah, it is exactly the right size. Okay. So that's your beginning of the casseroles. Now I've recorded this video. I've got um, four of these made already. So I've made four.
four separate videos, so I'll be editing and cropping and stuff. You'll see. Let me know what you think of the video. So my first time using this iPad. I've got a second iPad here, you see, so let's see how well I can do the editing. Maybe it won't get published for a year. <laughs> anyway, there you go. You can see it. And then you've got it right there. Okay, okay. So I am going to pull handles for my uh, large jaws. I've already got a lot of handles pulled. So I'm just going to show you how I do this. Uh, let's see if I can get you a bit closer. You don't need to see me, you need to see the hands. Okay, so when you're pulling handles, you've got to think of proportion. And your knuckle in your thumb has bulge out. And then, of course, you're, you've got little marks in your finger. will determine what your handles look like. So you need to use a lot of water. And I rotate the handle every three or four pulls because I'm trying to keep it even on both sides but I also want it thicker at the bottom and the top these are the side handles I'm going to put knobs on my lids for the casseroles And you simply just rotate it backwards and forwards, keeping it really lubricated, but not going off the end, so you leave a thicker area there, so that's where it will join onto the jaw. I just want them fairly even. You've got that kind of shape there, you can see as the light catches it, so it's thicker at the edges. All right, and then when you think you got it long enough, which that is adequate, I think it needs to be up a little bit higher there. You then snap it off, and you have a little strap handle. So I have pulled a lot of handles for my mugs there. I've got a bunch of mugs to, with the wiggly mugs I'm doing a video on too. And I've got all my strap handles here for the jaws. Okay, it is actually time to put the handles on. Uh, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. I've been waiting all day for these pieces to dry up a bit because it's been so humid. So um, I showed you my handles, but let's give you a quick look again. I've done two of them already. Those are the big strap handles. I'm going to try and get you as close as possible without hitting the pot. All right, so what I do with my handles is I cut them even. So that they're going to be as even as possible on the piece. Now, knowing that they are even, I put them down, and I, can you see, uh, I'm going to have to get you over a little bit closer, a little bit further down here. I'm going to put a thumb mark right in the edge of the handle there, press it down, and do another one right there, another one over here. So we've got that strap handle ready to go. Oh, let's do the other one, see if I can get the other one. So you can see that worked out pretty good, I think. Can you see that one? Okay, so same again. I'm gonna try and keep it even. The power just went out. It's actually a very stormy gray day and we've been threatened with thunderstorms, so we just lost power. So what a great time to put handles on, except for I hope you can still see. All right, so good job I'm not firing a kiln today. 
Okay, so here's the pot. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. I've got my strap handle straight, so I can put it on the piece like that. And these pieces are really tacky, um, but if you are unsure about it, it's a good idea now I've just done that, is to wet it. I don't think I need to, but just to give yourself some slip. Still seeing this? Okay. And then place your handle. Now the line that goes around is one of the reasons I put that there is so I can do this. And now, without getting my thumb in the way of the camera, I push down, push down, and then do another one in the center there. And then over here, I do the same thing. I actually have another casserole video. I have to stand up the angle of this. Try not to go over that line too much there. And you've got that handle. It's maybe just a need lifting up a bit on that side and then you want to get these even so i turn it around and look right across from the top and position the other handle and it, my right eye tends to always make things a little off so i'm trying to compensate for that but that's where I think it needs to go. So let's hope I'm thinking good. And then we press the same thing in. And same again over here. Okay, so we've got that position. You see the two of them there? It's a bit odd at the angle that we're at. And then I sponge it with a brush, I should say, not sponge it. And the power came on again. And then I like it to be up a bit. So I'm going to get my brush underneath the handle. But I'm putting my finger, I can show you that just to show you. I'm trying to stop the, the handle from literally being pushed up above that line that's in the pot. But I'm trying to push the bottom part of it up a bit to form a bit of a curve. So you can get your fingers, when you've got your fingers inside an oven mitt, obviously that's a little bit thicker. So I think you need to have this handle pushed up a bit. 
so my finger is just stopping the, bo the top part of the handle from getting moved above that line. It'll still go up a touch, but this is a good way of stopping it. So you, I've got like a, a decent inch there that's hanging out, two and a half centimeters. So that'll give the person with the oven gloves plenty of maneuvering room. Same here, I'm gonna wet my finger this time so that it don't stick too much. But the brush goes under the handle I'm not pushing against the pot, I'm pushing against the handle. So that I've lifted it up. Now I'm going to look to see symmetrically how they're doing. Actually, it's not bad. And then the steps for the second type of handle are identical. When I until I after I put my thumbprints on, so we just use this type of handle all over again, which I just showed you how to make. Uh, and this time, I place the handle. Let's see if we can get you so you can see this a little easier. Okay, there, and then I put my finger in the middle and pull this down like that and try to get the same angle down here too. So we've got a curve and then tack it. Wet your thumb, put your hand inside opposite and then you do the same smoothing. Pressing from behind and in front and this piece is quite soft, so I don't need to add the water as I did in the other piece. I did that just to show you you should do it if you're in any doubt, basically. But if you've joined things when the clay is like, I just pulled these handles and I could pull handles with the clay that the pot's made of at the moment. It's that soft. It's, it's a lot firmer than it was when I threw it, obviously. Well, it must be summer because they're out playing on their bikes. There you go. So that. I should probably show you. Ooh. There's the, uh, whoops, there you go. Those are the different ones I've already done. I've still got one to go. Okay, now the lids have to be trimmed. They're still soft, so it's a it's before I would normally trim, but I have to do it because I'm going to be taking and putting a knob off at the, on, knob on them at the same time. Uh, this is when some of my bigger trimming tools come in handy. You don't use these very often, but uh, let me get some power first, now that we have power again. So I'm just taking off to round off the lid. It's very sticky. So it's sticking to the pot, which is why you don't like to trim at this stage, although your tools would last a lot longer if you did. The 
okay so we've got a rounded edge now I'm going to put a knob on there and the more that the chance that it's actually got this these are so sticky that they're going to stick to the, the wheel again I can barely lift them up without bending them I put these sponges underneath let's see for one that's a little bit too shallow so I'm going to stick this under there as well Maybe two of these under here. That's what I, I have all these things on my wheel to that I use that come in handy. That should be tall enough now to stop the, so yeah, it's just resting a little bit on there. So that will mean when I'm throwing on top of this very soft form, it's not gonna collapse in. But I can't tighten this very much either, otherwise it will actually dent the edge as well. So because I'm gonna be throwing on this piece, I just take a little water with it. I have a tiny little knob here, ball of clay, which I place on there and just kind of, it's like throwing a pot on top of a piece of clay, but so this I'm making sure it's sealed before I start throwing it. And then wet your fingertips and center the smallest piece of clay you've ever centered. See the baby seagulls still. I wonder how loud that's appearing in my videos. The crows are worse, but um, that baby seagull just sits next to his mother and says, feed me. And at some point the mother says, feed yourself. And that's a very sad time for that seagull. Okay. Now you can decide what kind of knob you want. You can do that style knob, which is the easy enough to lift up. Now well, that's not too bad. Or you can take it down like totally center this. See how nice that sponge holds this up so it doesn't cave in when I put all that pressure on there. Wild America outside that. Wild North America, I should say. Now, I'm just going to throw this into a little mini bowl, but not too thin. You don't want it to fall off easily either. But you want it big enough and strong enough so that somebody can lift that lid up. Yeah, I'll sit this down here. That water pot's going to fall away. Let's use one of my other sponges. Oh no, it isn't. The raccoon. I think my raccoon came back. He's going to be the main reason people watch my videos of it in the end, I think. Listen to that seagull. Okay, so we have a lid. Okay, now I just turn the lids upside down, the right way up onto my jaws. I'm going to do some carving on the top before I start to do any trimming. So let's give you a little, my cat's in the background there. I fed the one and the other's looking up very eagerly wanting some too, which you can get. Okay, so there you go, let's get you in close. So I just turned these lids the right way up. I showed you how to throw the knobs on top of them and I've got to trim a little bit on the lid, but I'll be showing you that in a minute. So before I do that, um, I've got to um, do a little carving, so a little decorative element. Let's see if you can see this. And I should probably turn it so you can see me doing this. I like to make the glaze run into the channel so it breaks on the high points. And this is a very quick decorative technique and that's why I do that shoulder edge there so that it 
stops abruptly instead of kind of wandering up and down it instantly just stops at that level And the next part is I do a little trimming. So let's take you over to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to trim that uh, piece and also uh, do some more carving on it. So let's get you, so you can see what's going to happen down here. So I lift the lid off. I've wired it through, so I can actually lift it up now. Pin grip out as wide as it will go. Hopefully, this is not too wide for this. Looking pretty good. And we've got to be careful not to dent it because of these arms will leave a mark. If this clay is not really leather hard yet. It's pretty centered, but that's why I have a different grip. Okay, so I've tightened it up a little bit, but it's, it's not totally tight, so I've got to be a little careful here. So I'm just taking off some of the excess clay at the first. See how sticky it is? Because it's not quite leather hard yet. Trimmings fly and just don't stick if it's leather hard. With this, I'm trying to do a little bit of the trimming to you know, speed the drying up a little bit, get some of this wet clay off. Now it's leather hard down there. But up here, it's still sticky. That's the bit that is the thickest, so that's, that's expected. This is an old trimming kind of handle making tool. It has no name on it, but that's what it looks like. And it's worn out quite a bit, so it means it's got a really thin piece of wire there, which is great. You don't have to put any pressure on practically when you're trimming with this, because it just cuts through very quickly. There you go, I speed it up so the trimmings will fly off. Okay, I'm not going to trim the foot on there yet, that'll be tomorrow. Okay, so now I've actually put the piece back the right way up. I can put the lid on, which has not been played with yet. Um, so, it's pretty centered straight away. You could probably check that knob there. It's probably just a touch off there, so let's put it this way. It's the knob that I dented a little bit when I was working on it, so I want to clean that up. Caught it with my finger as I was turning it the other way up. That got rid of that mistake. Isn't that nice with clay? You can just get rid of mistakes, take a bit off. And then I have to clean up the look of the piece, give that little knob area there a real sharp edge where it comes out, because you can get your finger under there a little easier then as well. And then using this other tool again, we can thin the lid a bit. It's actually fairly heavy as a lid, but I want to carve into it, so that's why I left it fairly heavy. 
Oh, these trimming tools, once they get so thin like this, they're beautiful, and then snap, gone. Because it's just a tiny guitar string, practically, at this point. But while it lasts, it's beautiful. I have another one ready to go, but it's still original, like thick. And it'll be that I have to apply a lot more pressure, basically, that's all. Okay, so we've got this a bit thinner. And then I'm simply going to put myself a couple of grooves in to identify and get the glaze to work some magic. Because if it has a little groove to sit in, it gets darker. So we've got that there, and that identifies where I'm going to do a bit of my carving, and then I come down. And I'm going to do another little bit of carving until I get to that point there. I'm going to echo the carving that I have there, up there. Can you still see? Yeah, I guess so. That gives me enough decorative stuff on this to make me feel like it's, uh, uh, you know, going to show the glaze nicely. But I just noticed there's still a little bit of that dent in the knob there, so I'm going to round that off just a touch. And then if you really go slow, let's see if I can get this to work. There you go, made myself a little spiral to catch the clay as well and uh, the glaze rather. All right, all the debris will fall off as it gets dry anyway. Okay, so I'm just one bit, I'm gonna trim the bottoms of these and maybe flute a bit down there, but it's got enough already, so we'll see. Okay, the next step is to actually trim the underside of the actual pot. We'll take the lid off. So these were sitting overnight, not wrapped up at all. If you tilt it down. See how we go in now. That's pretty good. So really I don't need to trim much there because I, I did most of it yesterday. I just want to put a, um, see if I can get that just a touch more. Oh, that's pretty good actually, but okay. So I'm just going to put the foot. When I glaze my pieces, I like to be able to tip them upside down into the glaze bucket. Because most of the glazing that I do where we double dipping and even triple dipping, I don't do it to the bottom of the piece because the glazes will run anyway. So I like to have a little overhang that I can stick my fingernails under when I'm doing something like this, just to kind of hold the piece upside down in the bucket. So that's all that is for. It's a foot, but it's got a function too. Um, and then I'm just gonna take out a little bit here. See these trimmings are flying off because the piece is actually really leather hard this time. Still a little tacky. Okay, so basically just taking out a little bit. Let me use this, this trimming tool. This one is less easy to feel if the piece starts to get thin. That's why I like the narrow ones sometimes because you can actually feel if the clay is actually giving a little bit. I only want to take a tiny bit out of here anyway. Remember this is a baking dish, so you don't want to thin it.
it's just to identify the foot. I like the. Now I'm going to put pressure on here just to see. Oh, it's hard. I can't even press down. So there's some thickness there. So I'm going to take a bit more out. You have to be courageous enough to put that pressure on so you can see just how thin it is. But it'd be nice to get it a little bit more out there. It's actually a nice because I might be able to do a very thin layer of glaze in this area so that I can glaze the center and just have the foot that isn't glazed. And then basically it's uh, done except for some fluting. So we can do a couple of types of fluting, but I'm gonna do the type with a potato peeler. And that, um, I'm gonna start each cut down. Oh, that's not gonna be good because uh, it's catching the edges of this tool. So we can't use that one. So smooth it off again. So I'm gonna be back to my usual type of fluting that I do. All right, so, and that's the one where I've shown you before where I hold my finger and I move both hands at the same time. brush just to knock away the burr a little bit if you get end up with a you can rub it down like that if you want to you can use your hand like that too but that will give you a little nice texture underneath there to catch the glaze too and then the bottom area finally is I, I just do this and feel till I start hitting the ribs that I did going down because I like to kind of give a definition to the edge there so that each mark isn't just randomly going down a different height on the piece. It gives me that little band in the center there if I wanted to do something else. But um, And then just feel your handles, rub your finger, use the brush a little bit to get rid of anything that might be rough where people are going to be touching. And then just lift it out. So it's heavier than a normal piece would be that I do because it's as meant to go in the oven and it's gonna get some wear and tear on this piece. And um, I've seen people baking in pieces in France actually, old, old baking pieces that had chips and all sorts of things out of them, but they still function. And, um, but it just showed that, you know, I see these pieces do get a little bit of some banging around a little bit of debris on the lid there so knock that off but this is a good spacious lid it's got about a it's less than a quarter inch so maybe three eighths three sixteenths of an inch wobble there and the glaze will fill some of that in so that's a nice baking dish and i have five of these so um, i'll show them at the end of the video Hey, this is just a quick snippet. Um, I uh, make kiln fillers, as I've talked about in my kiln unloadings. Uh, you need something that will, you know, somebody will buy something for a few dollars that basically is quick to make and, you know, will help you make your kiln uh, more economical to fire, because a few of these will actually pay for the firing. Uh, so there you go. I'm going to show you the actual, how I make these little trivets for wine glasses or coffee mugs, whatever. Um, they're not um, that hard to make. You just take a tiny bit of clay, a quarter of a pound. Maybe that's even less than a quarter of a pound. Uh, I never measure the clay when I make these because basically um, they're just, like I said, kiln fillers. And so if I'm selling a wine glass or a coffee mug, people will sometimes buy it as a trivet to sort of sit on the side of the couch or on a table. Um, and you can actually... Um, and just stop you get those little rings basically and all that. but basically just make sure you don't make it too thin compress the clay to the center you do that and then you basically put your finger underneath a touch and just open it up make sure it doesn't get too dry 
and you can make an inner ring there so you've got a place where the side of the coffee mug will sit against and it won't slide then and that's it so it's a very quick I sell these at six dollars it's a steal and people buy them to put, drop their keys onto in the front door I've had somebody say they just use them for olive pits at the table um, so it's actually just got multi uses but it's perfect for a coffee mug uh, or a wine glass to sit inside there so and that's it I'm gonna make 48 of these right now just so I've got them to slot and you stack them three four high in the kiln if you've got a bigger space or you can just have one slide underneath a bowl and all that so it really makes it and if you sell you know half a dozen of these you just paid for your kiln firing so all right